Good evening, everyone. Hello, and thank you for joining us this evening. I am Ashley Rainey. I'm the Community Outreach Specialist for the Library of Virginia, and I want to thank you for joining us for our program using the Family Search Database at the Library of Virginia with our speaker, David Rincher. Um, David is employed as the Director of Family History Library and Chief Genealogical Officer for Family Search. A professional genealogist since 1977, he is one of the rare few who have earned both credentials accredited genealogist with an ICAP Gen in Ireland Research and a certified genealogist with the Board of Certification of Genealogists. He is a past president of the Federation of Genealogical Societies. David, I'm turning it over to you. Thank you, Ashley. It's great to be with you this evening. It's great to be able to discuss um, what we're able to offer through Family Search uh, to the Library of uh, Virginia now with their affiliate library status. So it's great to uh, be with you and spend a few minutes this evening. Uh, we'll have a question and answer at the end. So perhaps you have some questions. You're uh, welcome to uh, enter those in the chat if you would like. But I'd like to start out by just uh, talking a little bit about uh, what Family Search is and uh, uh, having um, having you. Uh, go from there and all of a sudden my screen does not want to work hang on just a second we're going to go back here um, and try this again Okay, well, that's just not good at all. Um, hey, David, if you click on the actual screen, it'll progress the PowerPoint. Yeah, it was, okay, we'll just do it this way. Um, I want to start out by just talking a little bit about what Family Search is. Uh, Family Search is the largest genealogical organization uh, in the world. Uh, we have uh, been around since 1894. This year we were celebrating our 125th anniversary. Uh, we'd intended to have a lot of celebratory events uh, going on throughout the year, but as uh, with us and with everyone else, uh, 2020 certainly threw us a curveball. And so uh, our celebrations kind of went uh, by the wayside, but we are celebrating 125 years. Uh, we are a nonprofit volunteer driven uh, organization. So while we have a number of employees, the bulk of what we're able to do is done through volunteers uh, worldwide. We're sponsored by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints. Uh, we work with uh, under the brand name Family Search. So uh, we have, as I said, this worldwide workforce. Uh, they're made up of people from a number of different disciplines uh, throughout the world, uh, archival and uh, library science majors, computer technology uh, personnel, uh, micrographics and digital imaging uh, personnel. Uh, many of these have been worked in these industries for many, many years uh, and bring just a wealth of information and knowledge. Just a short timeline on uh, Family Search and the Genealogical Society of Utah as we started out. We started in 1894. Uh, we primarily helped people through correspondence, uh, helping people to write letters and to find information uh, in their uh, localities of interest. In 1927, we started one of the largest indexing initiatives. Uh, it was on three by five cards. Uh, I'm always grateful to talk to an audience who actually uh, know what a three by five card is and what a card catalog looks like. In 1938, probably our most significant uh, turn of events when we started taking advantage of microfilm technology uh, to be able to capture images of original records. And from 1938 uh, onward, uh, we were able to uh, acquire uh, many, many uh, films. By 1963, we had so many films and negative, um, master negatives of these films that we built the Granite Mountain Record Vault as a storage center to preserve those. Uh, we ultimately acquired about 2.4 million rolls of microfilm and uh, were able to 
distribute or circulate those out to uh, family history centers. We have over 5,000 family history centers uh, worldwide now, and now with the affiliate library program, we can add another thousand uh, libraries in the affiliate library program uh, that are able to take advantage of our materials. In 1985, uh, we built from the ground up um, a family history library dedicated specifically to um, uh, family history. It's the building that we're now in. Uh, we're celebrating 35 years there in that building uh, this year as well. 1998 was a significant shift. Uh, we went from microfilm technology to digital technology. Uh, this helped us do a number of different things. Uh, we began the publication of uh, indexes on compact disc, uh, but we began capturing in original records uh, on in digital images. In 1999, we launched the Family Search website. Uh, many of you have used it uh, and are heavy users of the uh, site. For those of you who are new, I hope to introduce some of the concepts tonight and to be able to share with you some of the advantages. Uh, microfilm digitization. So now with these 2.4 million rolls of microfilm, coupled with uh, over 300 cameras in the field, uh, we had digital images coming at us from two directions. And uh, both of those channels of data were headed for the website. And so it was a significant uh, advantage to be able to use this huge reservoir of uh, images that we had collected uh, for many, many years, uh, in addition to the new capture of information that we were getting in archives. We began publishing those digital images online in 2007. Uh, we continue to publish those at a phenomenal rate. Uh, every day we publish anywhere from a million to a million and a half indexed records online uh, accompanied with digital images. So that's every single day uh, of the year. So uh, you can tell that uh, there is a lot going on. Um, in 2013, we launched the Family Tree. This was a community tree uh, effort uh, in which everyone could participate. Uh, we know that there are pluses and minuses to that system, uh, but overall we believe that it connects people uh, and that uh, artifacts and stories and other things are able to come together in a combined effort uh, in that tree. Uh, in 2014, we launched mobile apps. So with that, uh, you now can take your family tree with you anywhere on the phone. Uh, and you could uh, have it at, at, at your access and, and at the ready whenever you wanted and wherever you went. Many of you may not be aware, uh, obviously we collect records uh, around the globe. Uh, and one of the efforts that we have been doing recently uh, since 2017 is the collection of oral genealogies in Africa. Um, many of these are uh, from individuals who even have since passed away, uh, but anywhere from Three to 4,000 names, sometimes uh, these elders in these villages will recite the oral genealogies from those uh, tribes. Uh, we have uh, over 4,000 personnel on the ground in Africa currently collecting oral genealogies. Um, in 2017, we um, completely remodeled the main floor of the Family History Library. We created what was called a Discovery Center. Uh, for a discovery experience. So this was a way for you to be able to discover your family. When you walk in the door of the Family History Library, it's all about you. It isn't about how big we are. It isn't about how many records we have. It isn't about how long we've been in existence. It's about you and you discovering uh, your family and what you can learn about it. And that's the same now uh, through the Affiliate Library Program. Uh, we want the experience to be all about you. Um, in 2018, we completed a new building that uh, was completely uh, the engineering staff. Uh, so all of the all of the brain trust behind operating the website and uh, making things happen uh, goes on in this uh, separate engineering building located just a few miles south of um, Salt Lake City. Uh, in 2019, we also launched uh, DNA Help online. So it describes the advantages, the pros and cons. Uh, of DNA, what it can and can't solve, uh, gives you information for you to be able to make informed decisions about how you're going to use DNA in your uh, research. So today uh, we have over uh, 2,900 record collections in what we call our historical records section. So those are collections of records specifically to a geographic area or uh, 
ethnic type. Uh, we have 8.2 billion searchable records, uh, searchable names online with 5.1 billion images in the historical records collection. So I'm going to make an important distinction tonight to help you understand uh, records that you can access through the Affiliate Library Program uh, and online on the uh, website in your home. So pay attention to these two different uh, figures. There are also 4.3 billion images in the Family History Library catalog. So not all of the images that we have online are in the historical record collection. You can see that we have almost as large a collection that are viewable through the catalog. And so knowing and understanding how to use the Family History Catalog is also important to your research. And I'll demonstrate that here in a few moments. We have over 493,000 digital books online. We have worked with a number of partners uh, throughout the country. Uh, Allen County Public Library, uh, Mid-Continent Library, uh, uh, Clayton Library in uh, Houston, Texas, uh, the University of Florida. Um, we have a number of digital books that we continue to put up. They are every name searchable in those books, and so you can uh, use those as well. And then we have one of the largest genealogical wikis uh, online, uh, over 90,000 articles in English, uh, another uh, 10 to 15,000 articles in international languages in, in the research wiki. Uh, everybody knows something, and so we invite you to contribute your knowledge and expertise to the research wiki, but we also invite you to go there just to learn uh, about what you uh, are interested in for your area of research. Steve Rockwood, the Chief Executive Officer at Family Search, uh, says Family Search's purpose is to create inspiring experiences that bring joy to all people as they discover, gather, and connect the family, past, present, and future. So you can see that with us, uh, it's very much about creating those experiences and uh, celebrating uh, families and where we fit in the fabric of the human family uh, as that's woven. Let's talk for a few moments about online record collections because this is one of the biggest benefits to affiliate libraries and this is the difference maker and why uh, the Library of Virginia, I believe, chose to uh, invest in the affiliate library program and become a member. When you go to our opening screen and you click on the search tab, uh, in the drop down box you have a number of different options. One of those is records. And when you click on that records tab, that will take you to this uh, page where you can find a record collection. Or if you simply want to search all of the record collections worldwide, you can simply then type in uh, the name of the person and their birthplace and their birth date, and it will search everything. But you can also uh, browse all of the record collections to see which ones you want to look at and that will take you to an alphabetical listing. So depending on what your area of interest is, uh, you may want to do that as well. One of the features of it that I want to point out is uh, you can click on last updated and it will resort the list into the data that we have added most recently. So you see here, uh, all of these collections have been added or updated today. Uh, as we speak, December 2nd, 2020, all of those collections were added to or updated. If we go into uh, the collection type, and let's say that we type in Virginia, then all of the collections for Virginia would come up, and you can scroll down and you can search any one of those um, uh, for the records that you want. You can also go in and search by collection title. So if you click, if you type in Virginia here, it will show you all of those records. Again, don't forget the last updated feature. So if we want to see which uh, records in Virginia were last updated, you'll notice that today we updated uh, Bureau of Vital Statistics death records for Virginia, and yesterday we updated uh, the Virginia Bureau of Vital uh, Statistics, the county marriage registers. So it's a great way to see what has been done most recently uh, and to know whether or not you want to search it. Then you can simply search that collection uh, again uh, for the updated material. So it's a very powerful way to narrow your search and search specifically what you uh, want to look at. 
Um, just in the last month, in the last four weeks, uh, we have indexed a number of records from Virginia and newly published on uh, family search. So you can see uh, county mar marriage registers, um, death records, uh, Rockingham County marriage registers, uh, records from the United Daughters of the Confederacy, applications for relief of needy Confederate women. So you can see that there are a number of different collections that we continue to add to and bring more data uh, to uh, that area. Uh, if we go back to the search screen and we come down and we choose the catalog, this is how you get to the browsable images on uh, the catalog that are different from the images in the historical record collections. And so one of the things that you would want to do is you would want to search in the catalog. Now, the default when the catalog comes up is place. Um, so you can type in a locality and it will bring back to you all of the records by record type for that locality but it is only searching the place field when you do that. The most powerful search in the catalog is actually the keyword search because the keyword search searches every word through the entire catalog description, not just one field. So as a user of the Family Search catalog, I almost always begin with keyword search. In this instance, for example, let's say that I was looking for Virginia Orphans Court records. I would simply type in those three terms into uh, the keyword search and it would bring back uh, Orphan Court records in the various counties in uh, Virginia. So you can see here, for example, that I can now click on Elizabeth City and it will take me directly to that record. And when I scroll down, uh, you will see that there is an icon there uh, that has a camera uh, icon, which means that we have a digital image of that record, but you will see a key above it. The Library of Virginia's affiliate library status unlocks those images. So if you are in the Library of Virginia, uh, system within that uh, affiliate library, when you click on those, when you go in, you will not see the key above those images and you will be able to view those images online. The affiliate library status from the Library of Virginia unlocks an additional 700 million records to you. So that's one of the huge benefits to the efforts that the Library of Virginia has made to give you more access to genealogical data uh, to be able to share that with you because of their affiliate library status. So it's just a very important benefit now to you as a user uh, of the Library of Virginia. You can also access records uh, when you go in. Uh, if they are uh, unrestricted, you can access those through the catalog. So here, for example, if we click on Pennsylvania probate records and we go down, you will notice that there is no key above the camera icon there and that you can actually click on any of those records and view them. Now, here's an important distinction and one that sometimes uh, creates um, a, a little bit of a challenge for people. If you are in, say, the search room in the Library of Virginia, because our system recognizes now those computers as part of the system, the key, will, the key icon will not appear above the camera icon for the unlocked images as part of the affiliate library program. So you may say, oh, these aren't restricted, and you go home and now you try to call up the same record and when you get home because FamilySearch does not recognize your home IP address, now the records are restricted. And so uh, just be aware that uh, you may want to look at both uh, records uh, in the catalog, both at home and at the library, and it will tell you what's uh, unrestricted. Now, uh, you may ask, why are these restricted um, to family history centers or to the affiliate libraries? When we negotiate, we negotiate for complete open access for all of the records. Sometimes the record custodian says, no, um, I don't want to grant unrestricted access. I will only 
give you access to your family history centers and to your affiliate libraries. And so in those instances, then um, we have to restrict the images to just those centers. We even have a few record custodians who say, um, no, we will uh, give you unrestricted access to your family history centers, but we will not include uh, the affiliate libraries. Fortunately, that's a very small percentage, but you may bump into that in some record collections that you uh, try to use, even in the affiliate library. In, that, in those instances, you would have to access those through a family history center. But I emphasize again, that's a very, very small percentage. Then we have some record custodians who say, uh, no, um, you, not only can you not make your records just publicly available on the internet, um, but you also can't make them available in your centers. Uh, we will only make them available to members of your church, of your faith. And so in a few instances, we have records where you have to be a logged in uh, member of our church to be able to view those images. So those are different. Uh, record constraints uh, through the contractors, uh, through the contracts with the record custodians. Uh, like I say, our negotiating position to start with is to uh, have free and open access for everyone. So you'll notice though that when the camera icon is there and there is no key that you can search those images and then go to that image and uh, look directly at those records. So you will see this ribbon stream of images uh, one of the things when we uh, began early on uh, as we converted film uh, to digital image is that the software at the time to take those images was having to detect the front edge of every frame on the film. And occasionally if it didn't detect that frame, it would skip that image and it would go to the next image. And so you know whose ancestors were on the skipped frame, don't you? Yeah yours. Uh, so um, our engineers uh, got together and uh, put their heads together and they came up with a way to scan our microfilms as a single image and so we didn't drop any images that way and so that ribbon scanning became a very integral part of our system. Um, from there you can zero in and you can click on the actual image and view the data. Um, let's look for just a moment at family search indexing. Uh, family search indexing, uh, as we said, uh, we have in the Family History Library catalog, we have uh, 1.73 billion images there. Uh, in our browsable image collection, we have 1.36 billion images there. Um, so in, in some instances, uh, the images are available to browse, uh, but they aren't indexed. And the reason for that is we have uh, 565 million indexed images. Uh, it's taken us 14 years to index those records. Uh, it will take us 170 years to index all of our current images. So the inventories that we have, the inventory stream that's coming in is going to take a long time. That backlog grows by 20 years annually. So this year we added another 20 years to the backlog of indexed images. So we make the images available uh, unindexed uh, so that you have access to the data uh, to do that. With our volunteer indexing workforce of about 400,000 volunteers and uh, a big thank you to those of you who are uh, indexing volunteers, uh, it's about two years from the time that we index an image until uh, publication online uh, just because of the amount of data that's going through. So when I said we add over a million to a million five uh, indexed images every day. That's the product of this volunteer indexing that uh, has been going on. So it just takes time uh, to do all of that. We have been looking at computer assisted indexing at FamilySearch uh, to see if we could accelerate that. Now we know that there are some downsides, occasionally errors are made, but if we add a correction tool to computer assisted indexing, then that will work. So as it goes in and it fields that data, uh, then we're able to get those uh, indexed images out at a much more rapid pace. Um, we also then make corrections to that data and the system basically learns. So we train it uh, by making manual corrections to that. That goes back into the automated transcription. We get about 75 to 85% accuracy there. 
we improve that accuracy through volunteers uh, looking at things that are questionable and uh, we increase the rate at which we do that. So we are able to uh, reduce uh, the indexing time from two years from indexing to publication to seven days from uh, indexing to publication. So you can see a significant acceleration of that work. And these are the types of things that we're trying to do to cut down that backlog. So you can see that uh, with handwritten data, uh, it's it's uh, challenging, uh, but it is working. And so you can see how uh, the system fields uh, those data, those pieces of data, and it will go in and we will have actually be able to index those from handwritten information. One of the other valuable uh, uh, tools on FamilySearch is the FamilySearch Research Wiki. And I just want to mention it um, because as you go down and you go to the Research Wiki, there are a number of things that you can do uh, and, and gain from using the Research Wiki. I mention it because a number of people have never used the Research Wiki. If you simply type in, in this uh, search box, Virginia, uh, it will take you to Virginia United States Genealogy. You can click on any different uh, topic uh, and it will take you to those types of records. So you could click on Bible records or cemeteries or census or church records and it would take you to a page specifically about that. The other thing that you can do is to go to the online genealogy records. So if you're sitting at home and you want to look at records for Virginia that are online, one of the easiest ways is to go to the research wiki click on Virginia Online Records and it will take you to a page with all of the links that we update and keep updated uh, to records that are online specifically for Virginia now under those topic headings. So just a tip to do that. Uh, again, I invite you, you know things, you have done research in areas, you have specialties. Um, I've asked some of my peers and some of my colleagues in the genealogical community why they contribute to the research wiki and they look at me kind of in disbelief and they say, David, I cannot not help. Uh, and so it's just this compulsion when they know something to add something uh, so that they can do that and we're grateful for their efforts. One of the benefits to the Library of Virginia is that we send out a Family Search affiliate newsletter um, and this goes to the staff at the library which keeps them up to date on the latest tools and offerings in the Family Search website uh, and what's going on. So uh, please feel free to take advantage of asking the staff there what's the latest on Family Search and uh, from uh, editions of the newsletter they will be able to uh, share that with you and to be able to uh, give you that uh, information as well. So there are a number of different features on FamilySearch. I haven't had time to hit them all. Um, FamilySearch continues to actively gather, preserve, and share numerous records online uh, and from the converted microfilm uh, to digital images. Uh, you can access those services uh, free online and free in the affiliate libraries. Um, we continue to work with partners. We do data exchanges. Um, the Family Search catalog uh, now expands the view into archives and libraries worldwide. We didn't have time to talk about it, but we are connected with Archives Grid. Uh, we're connected with OCLC uh, so that you can also find records in other libraries near you. So all of that information works together uh, to pull that together. Uh, the research wiki just collects the knowledge of experts from numerous disciplines. There are many, many people who use uh, the research wiki. We didn't talk uh, a lot about the family tree, but we invite you to participate in the family tree. We uh, invite you to add data there and pieces of knowledge that you have. Uh, we invite you to add sources to the existing trees there. Uh, one of the things that we have found is when the number of sources goes up to a given tree, uh, then the fewer changes that are made to the uh, editable data because people see that a source is attached to a specific fact. Uh, and when you do that, then you also have the advantage of having multiple sources confirm uh, a specific fact uh, in which we always want, if we can get them, uh, at least two or more sources to confirm every fact. The mobile app uh, allows you to take uh, information with you and share with friends. 
uh, you can record stories when you're at a family reunion you can pop that on you can ask questions of uh, the people that are there and have them record their stories uh, we'll just continue to build resources to aid individuals uh, doing family history uh, as we said we are trying to uh, make this an experience that everyone can enjoy. We invite you to enjoy the resources at uh, the Library of Virginia. We invite you to uh, use the unlocked images uh, in the Library of Virginia as part of the uh, library affiliate program. Uh, like I said, uh, this unlocks another 700 million images to you <clears throat> through the Library of Virginia. So kudos to them for uh, taking advantage of the program. We're uh, just delighted to be able to offer it and for them to use it. We're going to move to questions and answers. Um, I have a couple that I'm going to anticipate and just try to share with you. So one of them is access to public records in Virginia. Uh, as you know, there were a number of people who worked with lawmakers in uh, the Commonwealth uh, to successfully amend the privacy laws there. Uh, when the new law went into effect um, uh, on July 1, public rec records created prior to January 1901 were accessible on the Internet for free. So while uh, the law passed, uh, that didn't immediately make all of the records in Family Search accessible. However, we are working to make uh, those available as we can. Uh, they are in this pipeline with everything else uh, competing worldwide, and we are uh, freeing those up as fast as we can. can. You saw from the recent updates uh, that we continue to post uh, records and make those available uh, through there. So uh, to date, there are about 10 million additional Virginia records publicly uh, viewable on Family Search, and uh, we're just going to continue to push through and publish those as fast as we can. Um, <clears throat> indexing in Virginia in just the past month, over 200,000 records have been indexed uh, and published on Family Search. Uh, we invite you to join the indexing uh, volunteers. You're needed uh, both to index original records and to help verify uh, automated indexing uh, records, so you can sign up for that. Uh, Virginia indexing projects will just continue to be uh, made available as the images are processed and as we go through. So we just invite you to do that. So uh, we'll open it up now to your uh, questions and uh, take those. Hi, David. Our first question is, are adoption records available? Are adoption records available? Um, it, those are governed state by state, uh, and so it depends on uh, whether or not they're open in a, in a specific state. I do not know about Virginia's. Um, I've invited Steve Waters, who is our records negotiator uh, for Virginia, to join us uh, in the question and answer. He may know specifically on adoption records for Virginia. I know other states, it's you can get them um, after age 30. Uh, Pennsylvania recently opened theirs, uh, original birth certificates up, uh, those types of things, but uh, I'd have to know more about a specific place. All right. Um, let's see. Are there any affiliate libraries in Southern California? I can I can use. Okay. So uh, when you go to our uh, website and you search for a family history center, uh, go on the website and on the opening page, click on the question mark, and that will take you to uh, the family history center web li uh, link. When you uh, when you uh, click on the area that you are interested in, it will show you the Family History Centers and affiliate libraries near you. And so you'll be able to determine if the affiliate libraries are there. Uh, and the answer is, okay. the short answer is yes, there are. There are in Southern California, there are affiliate libraries. Is assistance available for transcribing records? Uh, I am so glad uh, to answer that question. So one of the things that we have done uh, during the pandemic is we have gone to providing online reference. Um, and you can sign up for a 20-minute consultation, um, go into the research wiki and type uh, type online consultations into the search field and you can book a, an appointment with one of the uh, reference consultants in the library and as part of that process you kind of outline what your 
your geographic area and the problem that you're trying to answer. And so if you tell them that you need help uh, reading a particular record and you tell them the language and the locality, then we will make sure that the reference consultant that's connected to that um, consultation is someone who's qualified to answer that question. But that's a service we have not yet um, really advertised, uh, but we are uh, we're ramping up. We did over 300 online consultations in the month of November. And so a lot of people are learning about the service and starting to take advantage of the service. Um, I've provided some online consultations myself. I was absolutely delighted to help a woman in Australia solve uh, an Irish problem in uh, Northern Ireland. And uh, she emailed me back within 30 minutes of the consultation and she had found the answer she was looking for. So it's a it's a great new service all right Ma, um, this is a question from one of our attendees is my grandfather was an fop fpoc in alexandria virginia on 1850 on the 1850 census how would i determine the church he went to he was method he was a methodist minister in arkansas in 1880. Well, that is a detailed Virginia question that uh, I am not equipped to answer. Um, uh, boy, the staff at the Library of Virginia would probably be better equipped to answer it than me. Um, my my research specialty is Ireland, and uh, uh, I mean, I would start with background work on the church records in the research wiki, and uh, then maybe book an online consultation. Um, okay, and we can, if you do want, have any Virginia specific questions about records, you can also contact us through the Library of Virginia for, through email or through the phone. Um, the freeancestry.com is very popular with many of our LVA patrons. How would you describe the advantages of family search versus ancestry? Well, the, the thrilling thing for us, of course, uh, in the last decade is to have some of these major players come in because they have contributed significantly to the amount of data online. So uh, we don't look at it as competition, we look at it as coopetition. And so the two of us working together, we do a number of data exchanges. Um, I, as a as an avid user and as an avid genealogist, um, I use Ancestry, Find My Past, My Heritage, uh, right alongside Family Search. I use them all. Um, so, you know, when you're trying to solve a genealogical problem, you don't really care uh, as much about the site as you care about whether or not it has the data that you want. So, uh, we're, we are thrilled by the um, by these other companies coming into into it because for many many years we were basically the only the only big game in town and uh, I, I can't tell you the you know I mean ancestry was just valued at 4.6 billion dollars so th you know the fact that they're bringing money to the table and committing to resources and online genealogy for us is just fantastic plus they're able to do DNA which uh, we aren't all right um david this is a wide range we have a lot of these questions coming in and can you explain again why researchers can only access certain records at the library of virginia versus through the free family search website yeah and maybe steve wants to jump in here um it's basically governed by contract by contract by record custodian and so the record custodian determines our ability to make those images available online and so when the record custodian says no i'm not going to grant just free and open access to everyone and that but tells us that we can make it available through the family history centers and the affiliate libraries then we have to put the key lock on the image and you have to go to one of those centers or affiliate libraries to see the image that's all governed by contract with the record custodian so that could be a local church archive. It could be a uh, it could be a county clerk. It could be a state archive. Uh, it just depends on the record custodian. Steve, is there anything you want to add there? Uh, that's correct. We we would always opt for free access for everybody if we can. Right. But uh, when when the record custodian says I want you to restrict the access, we have to respect that. So. Yeah. But but that's also why it's so great that. Uh, Library of Virginia now is an affiliate because, like I said, it unlocks another 700 million images. Yeah. 
Okay, the questions are flying in. Um, <laughs> what is the best manner for researching Scott Irish immigrants, immigrant ancestors who arrived in the U.S. prior to the American Revolution? It seems that most Irish records are for those arriving after the family is in Ireland. Yeah, so this is a specific now Irish question, and um, the uh, the bulk of the Scots Irish immigration into uh, America occurred as you as as this researcher is uh, likely well aware uh, between the 1720s and the 1780s, um, and so during that era, uh, many of them traveled together. Uh, we almost always ex use extensively neighborhood research and. Uh, discover where some of those neighbors are from and then we start looking uh, similarly for them from that same area. Uh, we look, we rely heavily on if there are church records available, which for a lot of times for the Scots-Irish, for the uh, Presbyterians, there are not, uh, but we uh, rely heavily on estate records where these people had leases and if we can look at those leases and see who the neighbors were in Ireland and then look at the neighbors in uh, America, we begin to build that and put that picture together. Um, but there are, um, there are also a number of immigrant letters uh, at the Mellon Center in uh, Omaha in County Tyrone. That, that database is now uh, freely searchable online, uh, which it didn't used to be. Uh, yeah, so there's, there's just a uh, there's a whole talk on just Scots-Irish immigration uh, to Virginia or to Pennsylvania or uh, southern states or Midwest. I mean, I've done that talk a number of different times. Um, is there a way to protect one's family tree on family search from erroneous material being added to your tree? So it's a great question. Uh, in the family tree, um, there are a couple things that you can do. Uh, there are a couple ways that you can add data to the tree and not have it change. One is to do a genealogical proof summary. So just write out the data with the sources the way you believe the family should appear and attach it as a PDF file. The other thing is to start a conversation uh, in, the, uh, in the discussion uh, part of it and nobody can change the discussion. They can add to it, they can dispute it, they can take uh, different opinion, but they can't change what you've said. Um, so the example I like to use is my father's name was Joy, J-O-Y, uh, Joy Thomas Rencher. Uh, my grandfather's name was uh, Thomas J, J-A-Y, Rencher. I've had a number of people go into the tree and correct what they thought was a, a typographical error on my father's name and change my father's name to J. Uh, until I started a discussion on that, and I, I titled the discussion, Joy Not Jay. Uh, when I did that and said, I'm his son, it really was Joy. It was an upper country Arizona thing amongst the Danish population there. There's Joy Ashcroft, Joy Waite, Joy Whiting. I mean, there were a number of different men named Joy in that community. So you can do that. The other thing you can do is you can upload it to uh, pedigree resource file into the genealogy section uh, and that is not the family tree but it's searchable under genealogies on the family search website and nobody can make changes to your data there so that's uh, something that we could maybe talk about another day but uh, you can certainly uh, upload your uh, your information there and uh, not have it changed um, if I have original materials, original records, can I upload them to FamilySearch? Um, I'd have to know what the materials were. You can certainly upload um, evidence or documents to the family tree that attach to a specific individual. If what you're saying is, for example, that I have the cemetery books from a now abandoned cemetery, uh, I have the original records, then that's a question that I would have to toss to Steve uh, because it, it would get into original record material. Steve? And I don't know how to, I don't think there's a way to do entire collections. I mean, my mother passed away this year and I have her official death certificate. I've uploaded it as a source for my mother, but entire collections, if you've got collections like that, I would prefer they contact me and see if that's something we can't ingest and put out through our regular publication 
uh, methodology. Yeah. You want to give them your contact info, Steve? Yeah. Simple Steve at FamilySearch.org. And if it's Virginia based, we will always, we would like to have it as well. So you can also contact the Library of Virginia about donating that information. Um, it seems that recent that recently some of the census records aren't as easily accessible as before. Were there any recent restrictions placed on your ability to provide free data? Um, I'm not aware of any, and that's the first I've heard of anybody yeah. having issues accessing our census data. Yeah, so, same here. That's news to me. Yeah, they'd have to send us a send us a. a specific example or screenshot or something because uh, i mean we'll go chase the problem but that's not that's not a problem that we're aware of um, the best way probably to do it is to hit the feedback button on the family search website because our engineers read every one of those comments and if there's something going on with a specific census record then we need to we need to know it and fix it all right um we're going to answer a couple more because we're going to be running out of time soon is there a section on family search that focuses on the first families of Virginia and the families of the Tidewater communities? Um, I'm not aware of a data set that focuses on them, but remember I'm not as familiar with the Virginia records either. Um, uh, we, we have been working with some organizations. So for example, we just did Mayflower. So if we've been working with an organization on those early families, then yes, there may be a data set that's specific to it. Again, the first place I would go is to the research wiki and read what has been entered on that topic, because the topic certainly would have been covered and what we know about it would have been uh, spelled out there. If there's an organization that we can work with that is willing to work with us to um, add that to the genealogy section or something of that nature. So with Mayflower, for example, we not only uploaded the database of the lineage linked individuals, but we imaged all of the application files for the Mayflower Society. So that's a it's been a tremendous boon to Mayflower research. Okay, we're going to ask like two more questions. Um, can you upload your family tree from Ancestry to family search? Uh, the short answer is no. Uh, and the reason for it is um, we have we created an, an impedance model uh, simply to reduce duplication because if people just uploaded their GEDCOM file, uh, we had that in the pedigree resource file. Uh, every six months or so, people would just completely upload their entire GEDCOM file again. And so it just created uh, hundreds slash thousands of duplicate records in the pedigree resource file and so when we created family tree we headed that problem off by not allowing uh, complete GEDCOM uploads and that's what it would have to be from Ancestry is you would have to take a GEDCOM file across and upload it and so at this point we have you go in and uh, put that information in individually so that we can determine whether or not there are duplicates already in there. Okay um is is there another part of the catalog record that indicates restricted status other than the key so that they well so that they can be anticipated when you're doing research from home yeah uh, it's a feature that i would love to have and one that i have <clears throat> worked with the engineers to see if we can implement um, as of today the answer is no uh, but i will tell you that it is on their list of uh, functionality that we are trying to get. Uh, it, it certainly is high on the list of those of us who actively do research. Uh, I, I feel your pain. I understand the question and uh, all I can say is I'm working on it. Thank you. And one, our final question for tonight is, can you speak to some of the immigration records that are available on FamilySearch? Um, I'd love to speak to that because you're able to search by um, topic uh, and so you can go down and you can actually click on uh, just immigration records and do your search and that's the only records that it will search we have systematically been going through indexing all of the ship passenger lists and all of the naturalization records county by county uh, we're still in the midst of that project but it was our intent to create the best database of um, immigration records uh, 
on the internet and so that is ongoing but uh, I would I would encourage you to go down and by record type click on just immigration and then do your search and it will only search so you won't get back all of the noise from census and everything else you will only get records directly related to immigration so that's a that's a great final question love that one and David, I want to thank you for participating in this webinar with us. And we are super excited to be an affiliate library of FamilySearch. And just to let all the attendees know that this webinar will be available at a later date on the Library of Virginia's social media platforms for you to be able to view. And thank you again, David. Well, and I want to just send out a special thanks to Sandy uh, Treadway and John Metz, uh, both of whom worked very hard to get affiliate library status for the Library of Virginia. And so thanks to both of them for working so hard to see this through. It was not an easy process, but we are we are glad that we finished the, the uh, got across the finish line. So thank you. Thank you, everyone, and have a good night. Thank you.